That's a charm. What is up, gamers? What's up, Sneeples? We're back at it again with another podcast. You know we do it every week. We had to deliver this week as well. Uh, what's going on in Flesh and Blood this week, Sneep? You know what? The PQ season is uh, it's starting to wrap up. Uh, but what's on a lot of people's mind, and people are still talking, hooting and hollering about it, is, is Jarl, the, the new Guardian hero. We're going to come back to that pro quest because we got a lot to talk about there. But we I do... do have some opinions about Jarl and some other people have some opinions about Jarl and I'm just going to come out the gate swinging here I don't like Buckle yeah I, uh, I don't like it I wonder how good Jarl's ability is if that's what makes Jarl good or if it's just the fact that he can have earth and ice because mm-hmm. if his ability is good you should be all in on Buckle I think Hear me out. Hear me out. All right. I'm hearing you. Every time I've ever thrown a tear asunder at someone. Sure. What do they do? You know what they do. They give you the fridge. Yeah, they give you the armor. They give you a three block and a piece of armor. Yep. Well, if you're just Titan's fisting. Yeah. But if you're doing. Yeah, but I mean, I guess you could play like Crush the Week or something, or maybe you're like Tunic Mangle. Yeah, something little bigger. Yeah. I get you, I get you. Yeah, then yeah. they're going to give you... The, well, it's still going to be a three block and then an armor, and then you pray they don't have a D-React in the arsenal. Right, sure. Yeah. But do you even bring in D-Reacts against Yarl, though? I think you're going to need to. Because... But, okay, why? What do you think? If he takes your armor... Uh-huh. Like he's going to do, right? Presumably, because he's playing these right. cards that want to take your armor. Yep. Um, and you have a D-React in your arsenal later in the game, and you have an open armor slot, and then they go, uh, go again attack into C and C, or go uh, go again ice card into, right. not C and C, but we'll say like weakest link or something, sure. right? Sure, yeah. And you have to pay one for your D-React. I don't know if I want to <sighs> be in that situation. Dude, this is the classic. This is like Icelander again, where it's like, oh, I got to fucking, uh, you know, Right before I get to play something, I get a frostbite. Uh, yeah. Um, Seems. Tough. I don't know. It's. I think you still want it because, like, you don't want Okinol to hit, and if you're playing no. me, you don't want Frostfang to hit. So, like, <laughs> but if you Frostfang, then, then they're gonna have a frostbite. They're gonna. Yeah. So they're gonna give you a card either way. Well, how about this stuff? Check this out. D-react. Check this out. Because Frostwing says discard a card or pay two, pay one. They could, yeah, they could pay one. And for it kind of works out. Kind of works but out. But then, then they're not blocking Frostfang, though. Yeah, well, you're saying they're gonna true. let it hit. <laughs> well, but then a pummel comes, and it's like, oops. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Yeah. They have the two to pay for the pummel. That's true. All right. I, I do think you y'all one. is gonna be a pummel deck, and I think that's why you do want the reacts because I think you should expect pummel in y'all. He's, he's a guardian. Every guardian plays pummel. Yeah, yeah, but I don't want to get too sidetracked here. Yeah, let's get back on Buckle here. Buckle, bro. If you, I would just rather tear asunder. Am I tripping? No, tear asunder. I, I hundred percent agree. It's always going to be the better card. I mean, like discarding cards is so much better than putting a minus one counter or destroying a mm-hmm. thing with minus one counter. Um, it's interesting because on their video they showed Buckling Blows art, so you can tell that. Buckling Blow is going to be a part of the kit. I think Buckle's mm-hmm. going to be a part of the kit, too. So, I can see that, too, yeah. Yeah, which it's kind of a tall tale sign that it's probably not going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. That's fair. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I guess there's a world where you would play, yeah, maybe Terrace Under is better, and you play three Terrace Under and three Buckling Blow, but that seems a could. bit excess- excessive. Uh And it also really depends on if you're on the Earth and Ice package. And if you are, that's probably where you want your blue base to be is in those Earth Mm -hmm. and Ice cards. Yeah. Um, So I'm not 100% sold on Buckle. Yeah, I think that's fair. I do wonder if there's like a hyper-aggressive equipment destroying package where it's like you're running Buckle, Buckling Bows, Mangles, um, his block card to bring out the Mangles, and then even exposed to the elements in the main board. And, like, that's your whole goal. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's enough. (laughs) I don't. I think what you said earlier is, like, the perfect reason why you don't necessarily need a Buckle is that 
you're absolutely right. Like a Terra Sunder or even like an Okinol or Frostfang or a CNC, that's going to get equipment. Eventually, mm-hmm. it's going to get equipment. Like if you played that against Aurora today, Aurora doesn't want to block with cards from hand. They want to block with equipment. So you are going to get the minus one counters on the equipment already. Mm-hmm. Um, so but I guess it kind of also argues for Buckle. I think Mangle will be enough. I, I, think, think, yeah, I think you'll yeah. definitely play Mangle, right? Because sure. Yeah. And if you're already playing Pummel, you know, two blues, Pummel, Mangle, I think you're mm-hmm. going to, you're going to get the sense. equipment. You, they can't yeah. play around it. And if you're playing around it too hard, yeah, you're just going to lose. Okay. I figured it out. What if his scythe, hammer, whatever, <laughs> his weapon, right? Uh, probably two handed. And if it is two handed, it's going to swing a little bit bigger. What if it swings for six? So Buckle puts it to being a seven break point. Okay. It's a little bit better. I could be talked into the only if it costed four though. The sure. Weapon. Yeah, it it would it would have to still go into the uh the resource curve. Right. Yeah, yeah. could it if it costed five, it couldn't work. Right. Mm-hmm. But if it was like tuna counter, pitch two blues, buckle, weapon, yeah, I could see that. I could see yeah. that. Um another overrated card. I think is probably Heart of Ice. I don't think that card's very good. It's just Kano, right? It's just Null Rune Robe? Or is there something else you're thinking with it? It is just Kano. It does stop D-Reacts. But you're not going to play it against D-Reacts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're never taking out Tunic okay. against a D-React deck, right? It's probably good at the Riptide. <laughs> okay. You got me there. It probably is good into Riptide. It pro- <laughs> probably is. Uh, uh, yeah, Enigma? I mean that's fair. That's fair. It's uh, it's like shock know. charmers nowadays, right? Like it's mm-hmm. only for Kano. So, do you need the card? No. Uh, if you have a Kano player, all right. If there's a Kano, local Kano player, you should probably get the card. It's cheap anyways. It's mm-hmm. not too bad. And one I think is way better that people aren't talking about is Polar Blast. Polar Blast just seems so good in the deck. Bro. I think so too. It seems so good because you. Oh, this is gonna lead perfect into another one I want to talk okay. about. So if you pitch yeah. a blue, you polar blast. Mm-hmm. Now they have a frostbite, and they have and, to decide. And what? They have to decide. And they have to now. decide, right? Yeah. Do they want to pay one? Do they want to give your next thing dominate? And if you're going into like a weakest link, like, okay. Well, now I have to give him armor, which means that he's gonna be even more turned on. It just seems so good in this deck. Like way, I thought it was gonna be good at first, but then the more I thought about it, the better it gets. Yeah, dominates real, especially when you're when you are trying to do stuff like mangle, you know. Right. Um, I think there is some spots for polar bass. If you're not a polar bass lover and you like cold snap more, that's fine too. I think there's spots for that. I think both of those being able to give the frostbite, like you're saying, and draw a card and then proceed with the turn is actually Mm -hmm. really really good i'm all about it i'm for it which one's cold snap oh that's the freeze the arsenal one right freeze the arsenal one so it's still okay you know still still good yeah yeah honestly you might play both honestly i could see i mean okay so you know i i'm making a few jokes but i've been i've been messing around with with y'all i've been doing different builds and i'm i'm exploring everything Mm -hmm. and there's a seismic Surge build with the uh, Earth Lord Bounty Chest, um, where I'm running, I'm running so tomorrow. I'm running Polar Blast. I'm running Cold Snap because it draws you cards, gets you Seismic Surge tokens. Okay, uh, yeah. I haven't so, heard anyone cook with that, but it could work. Yeah, Tome of Harvest. You get three Seismic Surge tokens. Yeah, and yeah. Another thing too is like Ponders and these random draw effects are so bad normally in Guardian because you just have so many like heavily costed blues that are just going to be yeah. sitting in your arsenal forever but in earth specifically yeah you could play tome or you could play uh what's it called seeds of tomorrow where you put back your arsenal and prevent the next five true yep so you get a lot of value out of these bad arsenal cards that you're getting mm-hmm. um maybe that deck could also play peace of mind the one that gives you the ponder you right or especially that's if it's always a shield deck right yeah if they're playing the rampart as well it seems like mm-hmm. It could be really good, and then yeah, the ponder with the yeah, it seems fine. It seems good. Yeah. I don't know. The more I think about it, the more I want to build it. <laughs> I will say I do like it. Now you do have to be a little bit more earthy, um, which 
I do wonder how much Earth Yarl will actually be playing. I think realistically in competitive Yarl list, what we're going to see is actually only four to seven Earth cards, to be honest with you. I think it's going to be a Pulse, and I think it's going to be three of his uh, specialization that's Earth Ice, and then maybe three blue Autumn's Touches. I kind of think that's it. But but why would he even play the Autumn's Touch? Uh, oh, Oak and Old. Oak and Old Fusion. Yeah, okay. Oak and Old's yeah, just sure. so good of a card. Sure. It's probably okay. worth. Um, however, if I'm wrong on that, which like I said, I've been building a lot of different builds, so I have done a lot of Earthy builds. I do like that he gets well grounded. Um, as oh, an yeah, option, that, like that does seem like a good Civic one. Civic Steps is a double edged sword. A lot well grounded is not only like just two block, but also like you know we're talking about Kano. It's like if you get Heart of Ice, well grounded, and like a No Rune Hood, you're mm-hmm. just so chilling. I mean. It- it just kind of seems good in general. Like if an Ira tries to come over the top with you with an ancestral or something, having that instant speed, uh, yeah, yeah, it seems pretty good. That's a good point. Yeah, Ira's gonna be around too. Yeah, I, dude, that's another thing we gotta talk about is Ira because people are just sleeping on that. No one's talking about her. Yeah, you're kind of right. Like no one is the, talking about Ira. Maybe it's because she didn't get a uh, you know an a armory new deck. Yeah, Doesn't there was she so feel much like- hype. For Dash, she should have been so an much for deck. Yarl, and it's like she kind of got squeezed in the middle and just forgotten about. Yeah, she's like a skirmish. I mean, that's it, right? Like, it's it's like just yeah. like a little small thing like that. I feel like they fucked up. They should have made her an armory deck. She would be like the most easiest. She should have been like a forty dollar armory deck. Honestly, I think it would be an easy win. Yeah, like if they yeah. put Dash IO instead of Bolton, and then her instead of Dash IO, and then Yarl stays Yarl. That would have been way better, right? Like, Bolton does need the help, but the Armory deck didn't even accomplish that, really. I mean, there was a Bolton that went 8-0 into Battleheart Montreal, but the first Battlehardens of the season, you kind of see anomalies like that, Mm -hmm. and then that's it. And I kind of, yeah, that's where we're at with Bolton. But with what you're talking about, about the armor, I'm hoping we get better boots for Guardian, or at least elemental Guardian boots. And I think that they're going to, of course, they... Yarl's hero power is totally ice focused. I think mm-hmm. that they're going to lean heavy into Earth with all of his armor and probably his weapon as well to kind of make the essence of Earth make any amount of sense. Right. Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely I, see that. I think that's also going to be a good segue to introduce adult Terra. Like here, we already have all this Earth Guardian stuff. Be fun. Yeah. And yeah, it kind of would make more sense. Like it wouldn't make sense to introduce adult Terra right now right because we don't have anything really um we have the oldham stuff but like even crown of seeds is banned there's like almost no earth stuff for him um he had the he, he got would the just test be a piece, florian he'd be a, yeah. a, a copy of florian it wouldn't make any sense right now but if like no. yeah he had a full earth suite maybe it makes more sense and then the earth hammer that's supposed that could be coming could in be. the yarl deck yep. yeah it would make yep. sense is terra earth guardian or is he elemental guardian elemental and then he has essence of earth right yeah, essence or is he of just earth. straight earth yeah i don't think there is any straight earth heroes. wait yeah he's just he's elemental because you could play some of his uh i, I remember like looking at the fabric you could play some of his uh pieces from his deck and yarl because they're elemental guardians so he has to be mm. elemental guardian yeah okay. so that would make sense so yeah if it's an elemental guardian weapon then he has access to that would he but like to that point that would actually be cool because then you could have like an icy Yarl and an earthy Terra. That would be cool. I'd be about it. It was kind of weird how he just kind of came out of nowhere too. They're bringing yeah, a lot of heroes out one. of nowhere. I like it though. I mean, people saying yeah. they're coming out too quick. I, I like them coming out quick. The more that changes, uh, maybe it's because we're always grinding. We're always at Armory True. every week. It's yeah. like, yeah, the more that changes, the better for me. It's more fun and interesting when there's constant things to think about. Yeah, I like I like what they're doing with the sets. Doing like th- I think it's just three a year, but then like giving out all these like armories. It's like when a new arm like Dash IO just came out. It yeah. feels like we're in a new meta now, and that's kind of cool. Kinda, yeah, because I think we've been in the Rosetta meta a little bit long enough. Probably could have gone a little longer to be fair, but like a little bit long enough to like get a, a just a, a small shake up to like make things. You know, I think different. it helps so much. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's like better than like having like errata and bands. Right. Yeah. Just even like something small like the Blaze promo kind of went a long way. It was like, oh, that's really True. interesting. Makes me want to think about Blitz. Uh, as yeah. much as I hate Blitz, it's like with the Ira, it's like, oh, that's very cool. Another thing mm-hmm. to think about. Then Terra or not Terra, uh, Yarl. Sorry. It's like, yeah, just so many shakeups to think about in between sets. I really like it. Uh, yeah, you yeah. don't have to drop a full set. Just something new to think about. Just goes a long way. Yeah, I'm I'm all about it. Yeah, because like a full set is a, uh, I mean that's where you're like deck building like crazy, right? Like you're trying yeah. to like figure out what's the the new best day. You're looking at new heroes and old heroes when it's just one hero. It's just like it's just so much easier <laughs> because yeah. First off, if you like the hero, then you're just gonna focus on that hero. But if you don't like the hero, then you just need to focus on how to beat that hero. Right. And if it's just one thing, it's like, well, nothing else is going on. I normally am not a guardian guy, but yeah, I am almost forced to think about Yarl because what, like, what else is going on right now, right? Yeah, it's truly, truly. So I might as well, might as well. They also I definitely lot, yeah. timed Yarl to come at this time because of the you know winter coming up. They timed it. They did. Oh that on yeah, purpose. That is, I didn't even think about that. That is, yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. Uh, and it's coming with a legendary, going to be a little bit more expensive. It, the legendary's <laughs> got to be those gloves, bro. I think so. I have a question for you, since you're What's the market up? guy here. Because, uh, uh, you know, a good friend of ours, uh, Joel, uh, he, was, he was talking, he was like, the legendary could be a common, it doesn't matter. Because you can only get it in one that. spot. Yeah. yeah, the legendary is like... That's just like a almost like a buzzword in a way. It's just like <laughs> kind of what difference does it make if the Savage Sash was a legendary or a majestic or a common? It's the same card and you get it the same way. The only way legendary would be relevant is if it was like a legendary reprint. And it's like, mm. oh well, now we know we're getting a valuable card, a previously mm-hmm. valuable card could maintain some value, could make me want to pre-order it because we know we're getting something guaranteed to be powerful. But yeah, if it's just coming in there, it's like. But who cares? Would you think they ever do that? Like, could you see a world where, especially because we're getting more and more removed from Tunic, could you see a world where we can get Tunics in Armory decks? I think it's guaranteed, yeah. That's crazy. At some point, I think it's it's good for the players, but it is crazy. Yeah, I think that kind of stuff, yeah, will 100% happen. And okay. I think like one copy of CNC is going to come in one of these decks at some that point. That makes a lot of yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. Th- this is how they're going to have to give cards to new players. They're prepping that need us. It. That's what's happening. They're yeah. prepping us for this. Slowly, this one like, is not starts at the yeah. forty, goes to the sixty. <laughs> slowly adding a little bit more and more. Right. Here's another sixty, but with one CNC, then you got to buy three of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, for sure. This one is not a reprint legendary. I think they said it's a unique legendary. So unique, yeah, yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah, that is so, but, legendary. But onto what you're saying, we're both thinking this. That it's the. It's got to be the glove, dude. Yeah. Look at his picture. The glove's like a glowing blue, shows, crazy yeah. look. Looks like he's about to steal someone's soul with it or something. Like it's got to be the gloves. I it so looks like it's gonna give you a frostbite. And that's what it I'm does. hoping for. Like it I'm hoping does. like it's an Apex Brome Breaker, but Frostbite, basically. Okay. No, I like that. That would be yeah. that would be sick, actually. It's like you, if you block w- with the gloves and an ice card, give them a Frostbite. Yeah. Or that's beautiful. Uh, I mean, they could make it like more flavorful to Yarl and say like, if you block with that in Earth. Give them a nice... Sure, do a little yeah. bit of both. Yeah, kind of yeah. force you to play the Earth cards. They yeah, have to do something to force you to play yeah, the Earth cards. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's like it can't just be only Oak and Old. That's the only reason why you play Earth. <laughs> like it has right. to be something else. Yeah, I don't know what you would call that card, like a Frozen Thumb, like a play on Green Thumb or something. I don't know what you would play, <laughs> right, it, but, right, right. or you would call they do it be but, names like that. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can find. I'm sure they could find a cool way to, yeah. to name that or make. But that would be a sick idea to give them frostbites during the blocking phase. It would make sense, right? It would, yeah. I, I yeah. like that. I like that a lot. Um, I'm good on you all. You have anything else you want to throw on there? We'll be definitely be talking more about him, especially when he comes out. Um, I do. Okay, I do want to say one more thing on you. One more fucking thing. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people forgot about Oldham, as far as like what it was like to play 
as Oldham or against Oldham. Mm-hmm. And um, as an Oldham guy, you know, he's right here for me. This is this is my first hero. I'm totally okay <laughs> with that. If you forgot how much it sucked to get frostbites and shit, I'm totally okay with that. But I do think a l- what we're seeing is a lot of new people like, oh, yes, this guy looks super cool. I'm all about him. I'm like, just, you know, say that now. <laughs> you say that now, but ice is coming. You're going to realize right. frostbites are a, a, a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, I noticed that too. All the new players getting excited for Jarl, and I want to be excited for him, and I want them to like it. I do, but yeah. old new players did not like Oldham. No, 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 no one liked Oldham. No. That was new. No, they did. Yeah. New they players didn't like, didn't like Icelander. It. They didn't like playing against it. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I used to just kind of like this. Like new players can't make it work, and it's frustrating to play against. So it's like the ultimate bad yeah. deck for new players to pick yeah. up and play with. Uh, blue, blue, blue counts are going to go a little bit up. I think that's the big the big takeaway here is if you if you don't play against ice if you've never done it before, get some blues get some blues. Epot's almost certainly going back in the side. I could see Aurora playing Epot. Yeah, and just play if it's up. Then, you don't have to worry about Blizzard. Yeah, be good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, uh, actually, uh, one more thing I do want to okay. add. All right. If his weapon is a two handed weapon that costs more than three. Hmm. I think he'll fuck around with Cornet Peak. Because he doesn't have another good headpiece, really. I've been hearing about this. I have been hearing about this. Yeah. I guess so. It would have to be more than three for me to be okay with that. But, like, I don't want to do that, typically. (laughs) Yeah, I mean... But if you're blocking with two cards, and you're hoping that you could keep two cards to throw back your weapon, and then you have to block with one, then it's like... To me, "Ah." Cornet Peak really shined when... Obviously with Ice Hunter because she was the one that played it, but like it yeah. really shined because it took a card out of their hand, and that was perfect. Because even though I didn't like attack them to take a card out of their hand, I'm gonna do something on their turn. So it's mm-hmm. like I still, you know, it's still as if like I got a card out, so it still works good for me. But like if I corner peek as Jarl and I take a card out of their hand, and then they send like a three card hand my way, um, I can't do anything until they draw back up. So like just taking a card out of their hand. It, just feels less rewarding right yeah like yeah an icelander it decreased their offensive and defensive capabilities because you're attacking them on their turn but then in your it's just decreasing their offensive capabilities because that's just, yeah, that's a right, better yeah. way to put it than i did yeah absolutely yeah that's fair i mean also it doesn't play as well with channel and whatnot as it does in yeah. icelander um i guess, I guess sure. yeah my original thought was like oh it'd be terrible in Jarl because yeah, like it's it's an Icelander right. card. Yeah, but then the yeah. more I think about it, it's like, oh, but he doesn't have crown anymore, and the other headpieces aren't that different. They're mm-hmm. still mostly just block twos. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, maybe yeah, maybe I for think that it's reason a fair it makes point. its way. Yeah, I think it's a fair point. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Anyway, Ira. Let's talk yeah, about Ira. let's talk about Ira. I'm down for that because I think you're right. I think she is under like looked at right, like underappreciated right now. I what do you like about anymore. Ira? I haven't heard anyone like talk about her i feel like she's gonna be insane i feel like she's gonna be really yeah. good i haven't played a single game with her mind you but <laughs> how is she uh, bad how is she gonna be bad i feel like we're already in this meta where it's mid-rangey doesn't this meta feel mid other than aurora doesn't it's just all mid-range right it feels a little aggressively slanted but yeah it does feel decently mid-range that's fair to say that's fair to say yeah yeah, I don't know. I guess there's more mid range decks like at like A minus and B tier than I think I've ever remembered it other than like in heavy hitters. Right. Um and she definitely is a mid range deck. She's not aggro by any means. But mm-hmm. if anything, she's more control if anything. Um I do think she'll will be able to fuck around and I think she'll be like a Florian. I think she'll have game into Aurora. She'll be able to go wax on, wax off. I think that's going to be a really good combo for her. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. And then, like, oh, man, I wonder. I think it's just Enigma, man. Every time you look at a deck, and this goes for y'all too. Yeah. You just like un... this damn illusionist is warping our meta. 
It is. Yeah, it does seem like it's it's going to have a tough time into Enigma, just like everything else. But, I mean, at least the Kadachis are annoying to block for. They are. I do think Dense Blue Mist is going to be a big, big card coming back. Yeah, yeah, okay, you're right. I wonder if Enigma could start fucking around with the uh, uh, Fable. The Fable? What Fable? That's the one at? that the... Uh, uh, what's it called? Visit the Gully Mist or something. I don't know what oh, it's called. Oh, yeah, the yeah, one yeah. From that Parts one. It, that transcends. Yeah, it's like the yeah. first attack every turn gets minus one. So it's going to make it... I mean, it would at least be good against Ira. I don't know if that's good enough to justify playing it, but it would be really good against Ira. Like, I do yeah, like playing the first Kadachi every turn is <laughs> negated, basically. That is and really then you good. get to transcend on demand whenever you want it. Hmm. I don't mind that. Do you think Ira is good because of mask or like of her ability? I guess. Like, I, okay, I guess where I'm going with this is like Ira can't play combo because she can't fetch it like with Katsu or like Zen. right, yeah. So she's kind of a one trick pony. She has to play mid range. She has to play mid range. Yeah, and so like, there's not like an alternative sideboard plan that you can like play into Enigma. So if they're doing stuff like Dins Blue Miss or Miss Gully Burn or whatever the fuck that card's called, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, maybe maybe that's why people aren't super high on her. I could see that. Yeah, if she loses to Enigma, then how does she do against the other mid range decks? I guess is the question. Uh, because she yeah, she'll okay. still she'll still beat up the aggro decks just like every yeah. other mid range deck will. Uh, but how yeah. will she do into Florian? How will she do into Verdance? How will she do into Jarl? Um, I feel like she'll do good, though. Okay, I got a hot take. I got it. Ready for this? All right. Yep. She's going to be more fatiguey than Jarl. She's going to go I... to second and third cycles before Jarl would. <laughs> All right, explain it. How? Okay, so I think her game plan is going to be value town, which we've seen that in heavy hitters, right? That was all of heavy hitters meta was value town. And value town goes long. And I think she's going to look for the Kadachi lock. I think mm -hmm. that's how she's going to like round out the game and end the game. I think Jarl has a very good chance of being, it depends on what the weapon is, obviously, but being aggressive. And, yeah. um, I almost wonder if Yara was going to be built a little bit like, at least at first, like the Oldhams we saw towards the end of Oldham era, where it's a little bit more Guardian based, a little bit more aggro. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the people that, like like Michael Fang, did very well of Yarl or uh, Oldham. I think if he would pick up Yarl, he probably tries to make it a little bit like his old Oldham list. And so I think that's going to be more aggressive. And I think Ira tends to have like a natural build style to play into the late game mm -hmm. so this is my this is the thought behind my theory here yeah i guess it yeah it so depends on his weapon right i mean even if they Truly. just play sledge like can i yeah. keep up with just sledge i mean it's but that's the thing it's not just sledge right like you're gonna have pummels you're gonna have cncs you're yeah. gonna have oaken holds uh I, you're gonna worry about being mangled that's got to be the worst fucking part for Ira, because if she loses her mass, like she loses a lot. Oh, it's over, yeah. 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 You know, the more I talk about this, the more I'm understanding why no one's talking about it. <laughs> I know we're kind of <laughs> figuring it out <laughs> as we go. <laughs> but she looks she... cool. Like I think she's like one of the classic Fab heroes, and it is cool that she's an adult hero. It is, yeah. And she doesn't seem bad. Maybe she's not the best. Maybe she's not A tier, but she's not like. Mm -hmm. Definitely not like F or D or prop. Maybe she's C at the worst, but probably like a B tier hero. I think she'll be solid B. And you know what, yeah. too? I think the next set's going to have an Ira specialization in the expansion slot. And she's going to, it's going to help her out. And maybe that'll be enough or the next expansion slot for her will be enough. But something's mm -hmm. coming out for her. She is a good hero to like, um, like almost like gatekeeper, like test the format. You know, it's like, can, yeah. can you mess with just like, decently above rate value like mm -hmm. no you can't you can't even beat ira okay yeah don't play that deck that's actually a good point yeah she's a great test dummy deck to like get that feel. yeah because like yeah she's that. just like she's just above rate right mm -hmm. um but yeah consistently every turn she is above rate 
All right, should people be uh, picking up coal foil needles? I think needle's going to be good, dude. I seriously do. I think, like, Kadachi needle into take the tempo, threatening a mask, seems insane. And if it breaks, the needle breaks, okay? If you want to play Concealed Blade anyway, I think. Right, Concealed right. Blade's probably good in her anyway because you want to trigger these masks. So sure. if you're Concealed Blading and then re-equipping the Kadachi that you're already playing, um, it seems like, yeah, like an like a no-brainer to me. All right, I, I, I fuck with it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you would ever go double needle, but no, would, that's too much. I, <laughs> yeah. I think I would play a needle in like every matchup. It takes one D react, but yeah, like you said, if you're playing like three concealed blades, is there, I feel like there's one other card that might grab something back for you, but maybe it's just concealed blade. Is it but, just? Yeah. I feel like there's another one too. I don't know why. Yeah, I that's think like it, old it outsiders might... tech. Yeah, I think it might be just Concealed Blade. But either way, even if, like, you lose your needle for a couple turns, it might not be that bad because you're you're totally happy. Just pitch a blue uh, Kadachi CNC, Kadachi Erase Face, whatever. You're totally happy doing that anyway. Yeah, Weakest Link. Um, Sure. I I think you're going to play a needle in every matchup, especially the ones that might not have a D-React, like uh, Aurora. Aurora might not, because she plays Sigil, but Sigil doesn't break needle well so. what we found out and that's what's actually was kind of cool about zen because like no one played needle before that except for benchy decks right mm-hmm. and it was cool to see zen expose what needle can be it's like yo play this shit in aggro mirrors aggros hate blocking even if it's like yo you could take away my weapon it's like it's almost like a little taunt and i kind of like that <laughs> and like Ira could actually taunt a little bit better because she has that Benji ability to give it a plus one. And so yeah. it's like, yeah, I, I see where you played against everyone. Because, yeah, even if you played against Aurora, even if they have three D reacts, they're not going to blow up that needle until. And then on top of that, they just use a four block on a three attack. Right. It's like yeah. value. And then they only play Sigil of Suffering, they don't play Sync, so they can't pop it. And then what are they going to do? Tech their deck out and take out the Sigils for Sinks? I mean, that would also be good for you, right? Like, sure. they sink your needle. Yeah, like you said, they're losing a point of value there. Yep, yep. Uh, okay, maybe I'm a little bit back on Ira. It doesn't seem terrible. Yeah, she's okay. She's okay. Yeah, she's okay. Get but Enigma expect, out, and then we could talk. <laughs> I would expect new players to be way more stoked for Ira than I would for Jarl, but that's not the case. <laughs> it's because Jarl looks cool. That's that's 100% what it is. He, he has aura. He has yeah. He has yeah. A, he has aura. He does. He has have a menacing aura. feel to him. When you flip him, your opponent's gonna like. There's gonna be a presence there. You know. All right, check this out. The zoomers of flesh and blood. So the people that came, you know, let's say outsiders on. Maybe even even after that, they are gonna like Yarl. I think the boomers of Flesh and Blood are going to like Ira because, like, oh, I remember Ira back in Blitz. Oh, yeah, it was, like, the classic good days. So Bro, you got to think... be a real boomer to, like, resonate with Ira. I don't feel like we even know anyone like that, do we? Well, in well, Vegas, do we? We know Peter. I also played a little bit. I played at the tail end of those Ira Blitz days. Uh-huh. Yeah. But you're Back not like your own brutality. Yeah, you're not like resonating with that hero. No, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't hit yeah. me like that. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. The <laughs> boomers, right? The yeah. boomers of flesh and blood. Yeah, probably Wesley played back then. I could see that. I could see yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, uh, how did uh, your pro quest go? Uh, yeah, the uh, the Salt Lake ones. We did got top A on both. Um, uh, I was the only Enigma. Honor. That was weird. Yeah, that yeah. was weird. That was a I big know. one too. It what it was like thirty something or twenty something. I, I don't remember it, what. Happened. I think it was forty, like nearly. I think it was thirty eight people, something like that. Thirty eight. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. So thirty eight people. Yeah, and I'm the only Enigma. That it was so strange. I faced. We ended up facing each other in one of the rounds, mm-hmm. and then, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. So fun story. I um. So I go five and one. I only lose to one person in the in uh, Swiss, which was uh, old Casanova playing Aurora. Um, and he's not even Aurora, but he's a Levia player. It pissed me off. Anyways, um, <laughs> and then top eight happens. I thought I would ha- like go against 
the new there's a new in top eight which as an enigma that's what i was playing i was playing cyb enigma i would have loved that uh, but no uh, i face cast again and i get uh, eliminated by him uh so my top eight story ends there uh and then the next day uh we did top eight draft or Wait, like so we you did beat draft. Cass the first time or you lost to him both times? i lost to him two times now right oh, wow. one okay, is swiss right. one in okay. top eight all right, and this motherfucker already had the uh, Blanche playmat and everything. He had that out. <laughs> um, I I think he won the first. Anyways, whatever. It's it's cool because I already told him I was like, yeah, I don't plan on going to London even if I won. So he was. So it wasn't like he felt like he needed the scuba, and I wouldn't want that anyways. Um, but then we did the next day. It was double header event out in Salt Lake. The next day did draft. He's not even in my pod. But I do make it to top A on that, and he's the first guy I face. He beats me there, too. So I basically just lost the cast that whole weekend. <laughs> he had it's my number. Casanova. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Yeah, he's good, man. He's good. He beat me on that second day as well. Um, oh, yeah. I, I didn't know you face each other. Yeah, I played that first day on Aurora. I had a, It was like one of my first days playing the deck. The deck is... Uh, not the most complicated deck. I was able to get a top four with it. Uh, we didn't even know lost... you'd get the top eight. We were like, Jer, I'm sorry, bro. You're going to bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to bubble. I did. I was playing a practice game already, waiting for... Uh... <laughs> so I, I thought top eight was going to get called, and you were going to be there, and I was going to have to wait for you. So I was like, all right, let me get some practice games going while I'm waiting for, for old Sneep. But I made it. I beat uh, an Aurora Mirror in top eight, and then yep. there was a Florian. Same Florian I lost to in Swiss. So yeah, kind of same story with you. We both lost to the same guy in Swiss and yeah. Top. And he had just a Florian that was just built to beat Aurora. And I want to be mad at that, but if his locals is all Aurora, honestly, yeah, if he does have one Enigma in there. I gotta respect it. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta respect it at some point. Yeah, he had like just every fort block in the game, um, and every disruption. That was like his deck. Yeah, just disruption and fort blocks. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, if if you're whole locals is aurora that's that's definitely the deck to take i uh i respect it i just couldn't get anything going you watch that game i had like a flicker in arsenal forever and i couldn't find the arc lightning yeah. for like 10 turns you got him close though you got him real I close i got him to one right i think i got him yeah. To one. yeah yeah that was a good one it was uh and then that second day it was a mess of a pq we only got one draft and then it was cut mm-hmm. to top eight so mm-hmm. you had to two one this draft pod uh, which would be fine if I wasn't on a Cilio. If you won. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If yeah. I wasn't on a Cilio, I'd be okay with this. <laughs> and you know what's funny is, I, I thought about this after. When we were driving okay. to that ProQuest, we were looking at other players' um, like draft tier list. Yeah, yeah. And then you remember we seen that one where the number one lightning card on this tier list was Trip the Light Fantastic. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm not buying it. Tier list invalidated. This card sucks. It doesn't <laughs> suck, but it's not. It ain't as good as Lightning Search. It ain't as good right. as, as all these other Lightning cards I'm thinking of in my head. Flittering Charge Red is even better than this. Oh, and boy. then <laughs> I drafted this, uh, yeah, this Ocilio deck, which I thought was insane. It was, I thought, a very good Ocilio deck. And I mm-hmm. lost to Cass. His deck just, just lined up beautifully. He even said, like, yeah, if my deck lines up like that, it's a good deck. But it's probably not going to. I have three decomposes or whatever. But yeah, he cooked me. And then uh, my other Damn. loss was to just trip the light fantastic the deck. It was insane. I would play like lightning attack, lightning attack, you know, red etchings for five, and he'd be like, trip the light. It's like, damn, okay. Next turn, I would keep a grip. You know, I, I he didn't have a sanctuary, and I'm like, okay, uh, you know, lightning surge, and then play the card that's like a, what's the zero cost card that's like, if it surges, go again? Uh... Yeah, the uh, Trailblazing Aether. Trailblazing Aether. And then he's like, Trip the Light, fantastic. And I'm like, oh, I, that's IP2. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I got hit with two other ones that weren't as crucial, but it was like, yeah, just I just didn't have enough to kill him. I of value, the light. Yeah, Trip is, like, that's the thing. I value life gain very highly because Wizard, if you just don't have life gain in draft, you will lose the Wizard. So, like, Arcane Polarity is, like, a unknown one. And like mm-hmm. everyone would agree, like that's a really good card. Um, but what's what's really interesting is that like life gain is very good against like a Cilio and Verdance and like a Kano style um, wizard. 
but trip is actually better because of surge effects yeah because it stops the surges right yeah 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 and so and um especially like even if you're playing a cilio mirrors like trip is still good to play it is yeah i mean it's just also just a good card right like the yellow is a, a one, one for five four. on the red yeah one for five on the red uh i played that draft at night and day and i had like because probably everyone's thinking the same thing i'm thinking like trip the light it's not that great of a card it doesn't seem that great until you really dive like deep into the format yeah so i had like six trips in this deck and it's like yeah just no one knew the power of it and uh yeah, yeah i seen it firsthand against like the non-wizard decks i was like i would have an embodiment pitch a blue trip weapon heaven's claw it's like yeah present 12 off three cards it's insane great. yeah even if yep. you're not using the effect it's still a great card yeah no absolutely i mean blue is awesome yellows like that's the thing yeah. all three is it's like fruits of the forest all three colors is great same with trip mm -hmm. yep yep uh so that was my big takeaway from that weekend Definitely, definitely. Uh, we're about to. We got one more the next weekend. Yes, exactly. We're we got about one to go more. and try one more. Yeah, uh, we got uh, Dash IO now too. We do have Dash IO now. Now that's something to consider. Um, I've been messing with it. Yeah, how are you feeling with it? I think it's overhyped. I could be wrong, but she's very fatigable. Oh man, should I just disagree with you? Just to like disagree with you because like i kind of think you're right <laughs> <laughs> she's fatigable i mean it could it's a very complicated deck so it could very well be like i just, just don't needs have reps on this yeah sure. it could be and probably to some extent it is that i'm not claiming to play it perfectly but mm -hmm. man is it weak to disruption and fatigue mm -hmm. yeah i do think i think fatigue can be solved I think it just needs like uh experience, like play experience and like just time basically. Um uh, I do think like I, I know old Bills were running like conviction or convection amplifier and whatnot. I play that uh, one, yeah. Yeah. So I know like there's ways. Um to me what makes it hard with that deck is that you can go against a mid range hero, but you're gonna have to act as if they're like guardian and like a control hero because like if mid range if like a florian or viscerai or uh what's another mid-range hero right now i don't know just anyone really uh if anyone just like all right i think i'm just gonna block this matchup then yeah. it's like if you don't got the sideboard for it then you're just gonna get fatigued uh you can still get there like just like lining up stuff which i think is necessary mm -hmm. but um I think there's a real chance you can just get fatigued as well. What makes so it I don't hard think too gonna... is, yeah, is like ahead, against ahead. a viscerai or something. If I feel that they're starting to block me out, yeah, it's like, uh, what would I typically do against that? It's like, okay, I'll take a setup turn, I'll set up a couple items, but every deck is playing so much disruption now that you just don't yeah. get away with that. Like even viscerai is like playing that one for five that makes you discard. Yeah, snuff uh, out. What's that? Yeah. yeah, snuff out. Uh, everyone's playing weakest link. Like if you do that against a Florian, you're gonna get weakest link or plow under or CNC of the crown CNC. Um, yeah, yeah. Everyone's playing these kind of cards. You just you don't. And we can see a race face starting to make up. It is. I'm getting hit with so many erase faces. Oh, I think it's just fuck. because it's like the weekend uh, it came out. Yeah. Uh, so everyone's just like, I better put these in for dash this weekend. I guarantee it's gonna be like that going into next weekend. I think. Dash IO has room to breathe after PQ season, but I think a lot of people, especially in the beginning, because like you said, it's a little overhyped, and I totally agree with that. So I think a lot of people are overhyped for it, which means they're going to be overhyped to play against it. So they're going to be right. like prioritizing your race faces in the build. And you know, you know how you know it's not that good is because everyone thinks it's going to be good, and the community is wrong about everything. If there's one thing I've learned from being in this community for a long time, it's that they're wrong about everything. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Cilio best deck Zen is the worst hero in the game a worse oh, Katsu uh, what are some other golden ones that we've bro, got are you going to fight Ethan here saying Cilio <laughs> is bad bro <laughs> well this is what Cilio <laughs> is bad I'm sorry I, 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 to throw more shade at him call to the grave everyone's saying how broken that card is I haven't seen it in not a single list bro <laughs> yeah I know Levi is struggling 
Uh, yeah, truly we don't know until we actually know. And you know what actually, like, tells us results is what tells us. So, so like, Osaka is going to tell us what's real and what's not yeah. real. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how different you could play it than how I'm playing it, though. I don't... I don't think I'm messing up that bad. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I would be. Yeah, I mean, impressed. it's hard. I I wouldn't know what's different right now either. Right now, so it's like I think it's just gonna have. To, we're just gonna have to see the pros do it. Yeah, and maybe it's something I'm just not doing right. Like I'm not playing system reset. Maybe system reset is like integral I to do how feel you like beat that's it. A little janky, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, you know, I could be yeah. too. I I've not tested it. I just look at it and I'm like, that's jank. I don't want to touch that. But maybe that's the way to do it. I don't know. The one thing that Dash IO has against her, and every mechanologist has this, except for Dash IE actually, um, is that there's really only one way to play her, um, and one way to build her. And because, like, you're never not going to have items, like a good amount of items, and you're never not going to focus on boost. Right. Um, like, there's just no reason to unless you're playing Dash IE. And so I think you, if you're a one trick pony, then you become much more easier to have a game plan into. I think yeah. that's going to be her biggest weakness. And that's also why I'll say this High Octane is not going anywhere. She needs high octane. He, I mean, uh, it just depends how good she does in Osaka. Like, I can't, see, I can't foresee like top eight being like four dios. I can't foresee that. Uh, but if it so. is, then we could talk about high octane getting banned. I, I'll eat my words. I'm not buying it. Yeah, I'm not buying it. It could be like a visit the gold main estate situation for us again. Uh, I, I'm not uh... thinking it's that good. That card's not, bro. That card sucks. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen Victor win with that card. <laughs> Granted, Victor hasn't won at all since that card's came out, but... Uh, Yo, has Victor won it. anything? Even a pro quest? Sure, well, he's won a, won a, yeah, a pro he's quest. A pro so. quest but, <laughs> but has like, he won anything ever, you're saying? he's. I know he's won a battle harn and Blitz, but like, has he won mm. anything in CC? Not that I could think Bro, of. Guardians just can't. Other than Oldham, Guardians just can't finish. Why? It's just they're too basic. I don't know. That's what I'm gonna say. I think they're too basic. I think it's like Warriors. Warriors don't ever finish. I think they're too basic. Yeah. You need yeah, explosion. Warriors don't win. The Warriors is the worst class in Fab, like right now and historically. I was thinking about this the other day. Okay, they're I like always. This the worst class in fab yeah because sai was their saving grace for a good while but even she wasn't like the best deck in the format i don't even know if there was the best deck in the format at that point but yeah i mean hatch of the dory was a good deck kasai was a good deck but like if you went back into that format and really had to give it to someone yeah i would give it to ko or droma i would probably just give it to droma honestly well, then when Jeromai went out, uh, it, it was KO, 100%. Yeah, because that's also when we got Sash, right? Yeah. Yeah, it had to have been KO. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fair to say. Yeah, because Ninjas will be busted. Runeblades will be busted. Wizards do wizard stuff. And you see Ranger. Wizards finish, too. Yeah, Ranger uh, will be busted. Lexi definitely helped with that, and then single-handedly Brody helped with that for his alien. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, assassins feel like they always come up a little short, but they, they do actually come up won. a little short. Yeah, they still do a lot better than yeah. They warriors. do. I think you're yeah. on to something here. I never thought about what's the worst class, and this is gonna suck for our warrior mains, which there's a lot. Like everyone who yeah. watches Josh Lau, that is yeah. that motherfucker playing Olympia. He said Supposedly. he would. There's he no way he, he follows through on that. Well, he's I'm over a... here talking about Dawnblade or something, like with Dorinthia <laughs> shit. It's like, how do you play that one? You can't play right. that one. <laughs> I think he's hoping not all of us seen that video of the cat Bro, picking the thing. It's, it was, it's hard not to. It's hard or not maybe, to. Maybe he's going to play it off like, come on, guys. I was joking the whole time. Yeah, right, like, right. That was just, that was just I kind of feel like he could do <laughs> Like He should do it. He should. If anyone could get somewhere with Olympia, it would be him. But, you know, I don't think he's making top eight. And if he does make top eight, he ain't winning. If he does win, um, 
yeah, I'll do something. There's just no way. I mean, if you're playing a warrior, I think you're probably throwing anyway, right? So might as well commit to the bit. And uh, yeah, a hundred percent Olympia. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. There might be Honestly. something there. There might be like we just don't know. Like if someone, if you see an Olympian, they okay. If Dash IO gets big, who's the best warrior? Right, you're just gonna be blocking with your armor, make a new mm-hmm. armor. Mm-hmm. See, all right, we're cooking now. We're cooking. He's ready. For, he's ready for your old format, bro. He's ready. Where you equip bro. all your he's stuff. Like, oh, you they broke. You blew you up my armor. Yep. I get it back. Perfect. No That's problem. That's what I wanted. Now yeah, I refresh my counters, <laughs> dude. All right, everyone, pick up Olympias. Go ahead and spec in the Marvels. I think if he had something really figured out with another hero, right? If he really thought he stood a chance with dory or with bolton uh, i don't think he would have done that little charade with the cat um i think he he pretty much was thinking what i'm saying i think he was at a spot where he was like well they all suck so what difference does it make go ahead and have the cat pick uh that's where i'm at that's what i'm guessing but i think you're I right why why risk it if you know something right i still yeah. think out of all those warriors olympia is the wild card which probably gives you the best edge because like yeah, you're not if, gonna get a great edge anyways. If you sat across from an Olympia, I mean honestly, I don't know any what warrior, expecting. you really don't fully know what's going on. But yeah, yeah, really with Olympia, you don't know what's going yeah. on. Yeah, like I, if I it was Dawnblade Dory, okay, I gotta block three extra. Got it. I yeah. yeah, I get it. You know, oh it's Hatchet Dory. Okay, I understand like what the tricks are. Kasai, same deal. Bolton, let's see what the weapon is. Oh, it's a Raiden. Okay, I know what you do. All right. Yeah, what, like if you played against uh, Olympia, you would probably assume fatigue as well, right? I would imagine so. So if you That's started the... like being so aggro if you with did Olympia, like a yeah, if you did like a uh, what's that card? Merciless battle axe. You're pumping it. You're waging on this battle axe. Right. Yeah, and you're giving it overpower. And yeah. I sided out all my D racks because I thought you were on fatigue. Uh, <laughs> you could do steal some games there, and then if you're doing very well in draft. Right. There's a chance you cash with Olympia. If you watch my draft guides, I'll help you <laughs> out. <laughs> uh, there, there's some, probably something to just the pure psyop factor of Olympia. I want to say this, you know, because we gave we're giving Josh out just a little shit, you know. But like, respectively, if there's anyone that could do anything with Olympia, it would be him. For sure, yeah, a hundred percent. Like he is the warrior guy. That He's is the like warrior not, guy. Yeah, uh, that's not I to re- be debated with. <laughs> I respect the loyalty to the class. Honestly, I do. Yeah. Uh, takes yeah, it takes probably a lot of discipline, and I'm sure you figure a lot of shit out. You know, banging your head against that wall so many right. times. I'm sure you know a lot that other people. Colin Erickson. Colin Erickson, dude. Be our boy Peter Bunisik. The goat, uh, bro. I the, love Colin the, Erickson, bro. This He's guy's one of my a Kasai main through and through. When and he, he won beats that, Enigmas. <laughs> yeah, when he won that fucking uh what was it a ProQuest Plus event at At uh, Nationals. Yeah, and that was like a four hundred man pro quest. It was plus a or lot like of people. That. I don't know how yeah. many. Don't quote me on that number, but it was hundreds. It was a lot. Yeah. And he got there with Kasai in a Zen Enigma new format. I know what crazy. Fuck? Crazy. Yeah, Honestly. Uh, yeah, he's one of he's one of my favorite players, honestly though. Yeah, so so Warriors still have a chance, but yeah, they probably are the worst class. They probably are. Yeah. I want I don't know how they could fix it. They gotta give them new weapons or something. <sighs> or a new warrior, you know, that's usually what it takes, right? Like Ranger needed a new Ranger. It just cut off on uh, me. Right. Did they need a new Ranger though? I don't know. I like well, okay, okay. They needed a new ranger when it was just Azalea. Now, real quick, do you see my camera? I do. Yeah, you're good. Okay, because it's giving me that thing. You're like, back. You get... It did cut out for a second and then restarted, yeah, and then it said okay. like Snape right. is doing so a new recording back. or something. Right. But you're good. Cool. My uh, bad. Right. No, I mean they had Lexi. Yeah, no, but that's what I'm saying. They needed Lexi, so it's like oh, you're that's saying, what I'm saying. Like, and, like even pre tales. Well, yeah, because like Guardian needed Oldham because if it was just you know Bravo into Betsy Victor Guardian would be a bad class too 
So yeah. it literally tells saved, you know, made these heroes better. And like you said, Birdie made Azalea better, so we'll give that to him. But um They need like, push cards, bro. They just need push fucking cards. Like they need codex. Okay, but they got Yarl now. So Guardian got Yarl. Guardian so Guardian okay. would be I'm fine. talking about Warrior. Warrior needs Warrior like a codex level cards. card, yeah. yeah. Or it needs yeah, a good weapon. All the weapons are like not that impressive. I do like that battle axe, but that's about it. Which one? Merciless Battle Axe? Mm-hmm. God, I love Merciless Battle Axe. They got so a, if cool. they made a hero that could synergize with that shit somehow, I don't know how you would do it. You'd have to, like, your first axe attack gets plus one. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> um, it's already good. It just needs to have an illusion list meta, I think. You think that's what's holding Merciless Battle Axe back is the illusion? I think Illusionist is holding a lot of mid-range to control decks back. <laughs> Do you think that Olympia is able to consistently be aggro right now? Okay, so or other check this mid -range out. decks. I don't know about Olympia, but Bolton, you get mm -hmm. all you get the soul shields, you get the steel blade shunts, you get the fate for scene sink below's. If you went like a uh Centauri Saber combo Bolton and you just like dereacted until you got the combo, I think there might be something there. Because you life gain off that combo too. I hate that you're right, but yeah, the combo. I look. I fatigued seven chains in the first pro tour with fucking combo bolted. All right, it's just it's good in the aggro. No, I mean but, I, I won't argue with you. You're right. You are right. Um, but then I guess if you're doing that, then you're not only losing to illusionist, but probably other mm -hmm. mid range decks as well, right? Yeah, you're also going to lose to, like, Yara and Ira. Like, stuff that just wants to just do nothing but block. You're going to lose to those decks. Yeah, or, like, even, like, Florian. Verdant. Sure, yeah. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Maybe, yeah. I don't know about Verdant. Verdant feels weird, but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. I mean, they're trying to combo you, you're trying to combo them, except they're throwing Fellings and Plow Unders at you. You yeah know, like, uh, okay never mind i forgot <laughs> plow under just makes it combo like you can't do combo yeah anymore. that's true yeah that card kills combo it, it truly fucking does yeah like cnc you could block it would be fine you know give some armor give some cards out of hand fine if you think a pummel is coming over block whatever plow under you don't have a fucking choice in the matter dude yeah oh one more thing too about right. i just fucking my, I'm going all the way back here. Okay, right, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think Dio could beat Yarl. I played it a couple of times. No it doesn't way. seem winnable in the slightest. Hell no. Like even if not... you, even if you were like seventy two uh, main board, let's go. If they are even thinking about blocking, like it's <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah, I was playing against some, and I just like it wasn't even a game. It's like there's nothing you could do if you try and set up the hypothermia. If you try and just push them they block everything uh it seems kills dude hypothermia there's no outplaying it you just straight lose to it it's it's a warmonger's diplomacy for you for her oh it's way worse it's it way actually worse is way worse like yeah. yeah at least warmongers you could do a lot of better yeah stuff than... warmongers there's a chance you could just be like oh all right well you know zero to 60 twin drive uh pulse wave it's like that's all yeah. i wanted to do anyway or oh um, item item Item. Okay, cool. <laughs> right. Yeah, you could. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. No, yeah. You don't have a choice. In the it's over. Yeah, you're yeah. dead. Yeah. No, there's I mean, that's why I think high octane is fine. Like, I think she needs high octane. Like, I know they said that they were looking at it, but I think they're gonna be looking at it in the context of with y'all in the meta, right? They're like sure, like you know how they like to do this stuff all the time. That's what they did to Craig and Aether Vein. Um, they like to let it like ride out like its highest ride and then mm. like have something come in either through a ban or a rata or like a new hero or a new meta to come in and like you know put it back down and I think that's what they're going to do they're going to let Asaka happen it's going to ride high in Asaka and then Yarl's going to come and good players are going to play Yarl and it's just going to shut Dio down basically so it might be a trifecta but I don't know I don't think they could hit it because if they did, like the hero was very clearly designed around that card. Her weapon makes no sense if 
if there's no high octane. Right. Yeah, her weapon's mediocre if no extra action points. And so is the cere- Cerebellum Processor. Cerebellum Processor would still be fine as long as you, like, crank a thing off the top of your deck. You could still draw. It wouldn't be so right. bad. But, like, the weapon very often has four or five counters on it. And there's just yeah. no way to cash that in during a game that's, without that's high octane. And her, yeah, it feels like her weapon is, like, yeah, designed around a high that's octane true. turn. That's a good point. I, I like that. If they took that away, like, the hero would just make so much less sense overall. Like, it'd be to the point where it's like, okay, should I be playing, like, Habani Blaster or something? Uh, because, yeah, that weapon would make no sense. Yeah, Dobby Blaster wouldn't even be good. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 but neither would her current weapon. But, I mean, her current weapon wouldn't be, like, total trash. It just wouldn't make sense, really. Yeah. No, I agree. Like, I don't know. Because if her, you end the turn with, like, a octane. boost, it's like, do I even want to, like... If you end the turn with a boost card, it's like, do I even want to boost just to attack for two? Um, not if they're blocking. You kind of don't even want to do that because it's like, oh, one less card in your deck if you're boosting a red card. I don't know. I feel you. I feel you. I, I think that's a good point. I think it's, like, so important is the weapon. So important is the weapon to any hero that... Yeah, like honestly, that's why we can't even really come out with like, like actual yarl facts here because we don't know his weapon. Right. Like, if you negate the weapon, then you you negate a large part of the hero, and yeah, so I I, I think that's a fair point. Like, high octane really does make symbiosis shot playable and like usable. Right. Yeah, I think it's fair. Yeah. Oh, last thing I want to talk about before we wrap okay. this up yep. is uh, ProQuest Prizing. Okay. All right. Oh, we got to talk, talk about, about it. it. We got to talk about it. Let's talk about it because we're going to try to get some. And let's be honest. Who gives them if we get top eight? Yep. Honestly, though. <laughs> honestly, though. It's, it's, we're unironically at the point where the entry promo, which isn't even that good, is worth more than the top eight prize. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's actually I, worth I would more. trade yeah. my top eight prize. I need one more Rune Rager uh, Swarm EA. I would trade my top eight prize for that in a heartbeat. I wouldn't even feel. You don't even know I what even it care. is. Yeah, <laughs> you don't even know what it is. You don't care. Get rid of I it. Give care. me that Rune Rager Swarm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think uh, overall they've been doing a much better job at picking the EAs, just kind of in general. Like all the Armory Kit promos are way, way better True. than they've ever True. been. Yeah. Uh I think these EAs are they're okay. I don't I'm not super stoked with Rune Rager or Dead or Deadwood Dirge, is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm not super impressed with either, but they're they're still fine. Um They but... get played in every Runeblade hero but Aurora. So if you play any other Runeblade hero, you're gonna play um What's well, just the other? Oh, there's three. There's three. Uh, Vincent. Don't forget Vincent. Everyone forgets about Vincent. Uh, <laughs> I was actually forgetting about Florian. In my head, oh, he's just okay. an Earth hero. Yeah. What? Are, what? Aurora. Oh, okay. Well, it's two of each. Two. Each card gets played in two different Rune Blades, right? Ye- like yeah. Florian when it played Deadwood Dirge. He. That's the one that doesn't play Deadwood Dirge. Vistra plays both, and then um yeah Vincent. Uh, Vincent does he just play... plays Dirge. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I I don't I don't hate the EAs. Uh, I yeah. do kind of wish it would have been something a little bit more staple, I guess. But it's interesting I don't know what that, that they're both been. rune blades. You would thought one would be like a wizard and one would be a rune blade, but that it's would actually make more better sense. than the rune blades because wizards are not good right now. So it's probably better that way. Yeah, what would be like a good target that they could have chose for from wizard? The set? I mean, they don't even have to do one from the set. That's the other thing. Like, why couldn't we well, have yeah, gotten like, like a like lightning surge and a autumn's touch? Those would have been, been really sick. Good. Everyone would have got out the house to go there and get those promos. That's true. Um, yeah, if it was like red lightning surge, blue autumn's touch, blue, those are the yeah. EAs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the top eight prizes. You need to scrap the rainbow full hero idea. That doesn't even get you your entry fee back. So bad. It's so like bad. Some people you'll talk to them, and you'll be like, you, like this. Uh, I did you see it on Twitter? Like, 
it was like five questions from flesh and blood and if like you retweet it and answer these questions you'd be entered to some raffle or something oh uh, i was wondering was, yeah i saw people doing that i didn't know what i just thought it was that that makes more sense why they're doing it okay yeah i think that's what it was and then favorite memory i would read i read them all because i think they're kind of interesting especially if i know the person and a yeah. lot of the favorite memories was top eighting a pro quest that was their favorite memory that was a crowning first time doing fab. something good yeah yeah that's fair and that's fair i get that to do all of that and get handed a 10 dollar rainbow foil olympia or a 15 dollar rainbow foil acilio um i i think you're doing those players a disservice honestly yeah a hundred percent. Yeah, because I guarantee when they had that memory, like mine, my first PQ I won, I got this guy, Cold Foil. Fucking sick, yeah, right? I'm right, stoked. Yeah. You know, that's like my guy. And I played mm -hmm. him and I got him Cold Foil. Fuck yeah, I'm down. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I know that they they come out with Cold Foil here or Marvel Heroes now, right? And it's been working. It pushes the product. And it is cool. Marvel Heroes are super cool. So I'm not saying it should be going back to the cold foil hero part. It could you know? I think the cold foil heroes would be just foil. as useless. It would be just as useless. It'd it would be, be exact better same though. Card. It would be it would be better. slightly better. It would be slightly better. Uh, like a cold foil has a nice little little charm to it, you know? Right, but... it does. I agree. <laughs> I don't think it should be cold foil heroes either, though. Yeah. I think it, it. So what do you think it should be then? Well, I don't want to take full credit because this came from both of us here. We put our minds together here. And we, we were talking about up. this on the way back from Salt Lake. <laughs> yeah, all this Yarl talk and um, and this talk exactly came back. And, and it, after that, we we're like, man, we should have hit record. That would have been a good podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and you know some what? New ones up in here, though. <laughs> we are, like, I was about to say, like, it's still very genuine. Everything we're saying is not like, oh, scripted. Like, we're, we're off the cuffs here, but this one. This one, I think we're on to something here. We should do cold foil weapons. All right, that's what we're coming with. And you can make a Marvel, right? They don't do that right now. They do regular cold foil weapons, but now you can get a Marvel cold foil weapon, which that has more prestige to it. And I will personally say that I would easily take a Marvel, uh, what is that staff called? Uh, the uh, staff burden, burden shoots or something like that, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, I think it's like that. Yeah, something like that. I would take a Marvel Burden staff over yeah. five Rainbow Heroes. <laughs> like honestly, yeah. Like... Even if the staff is trash, it would look sick in a binder, which the Rainbow Foil Hero won't, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but like the card is good if you got a Marvel Star Starfall. Fall, yeah, you're in. Yeah, you're, you're actually stoked. Great. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, someone still would trade for that staff. Like, my, my fucking bitch ass will trade for that staff, right? Just to like, complete be, your weapon set, yeah. Yeah, just complete the set. <laughs> I'd be like, you know what? I want that staff. Yeah. Um, so it's like, you are going to get value off that staff, right? Like, the shiny cold foils look good. They look good. A rainbow foil looks like every other card game, right? Like, we didn't come to Flesh and Blood and be like, oh, yeah, rainbow foils are cool no we saw the cold foils and we're like oh shit this shit really mm -hmm. shines you know or i mean th like that i i do like that idea that's what we talked about on the way home but i put more thought into it there's okay. so much stuff they could do like uh cold foil plow under there's already the cold foil felling of the yeah. crown it would be able mm -hmm. to complete the set maybe you could do like you know a multitude of things like you do cold foil plow under and then cold foil um, I don't know, a lightning card of some sort just to kind of like, you know, four and four, mix it up or whatever. Sure. What um, about what about this? Like, because they do cold foil tokens, but those are like at convention centers. I was going to I was getting to that. Oh, that yeah, you're on that. One. That was all literally right, my right. next one. What if they Hell just yeah. did all the tokens in the set, either EA Rainbow Foil or Cold Foil or Marvel, like something, right? I mean, they did that with Outsiders. They did like the Ponder. Uh, blood rot, that, frailty, and inertia. That was for like the pre-release, I think. That was the pre-release kit. Yeah. Yeah. But honestly, that shit was cool. That shit was fucking awesome. Waste of a token, though. Waste of a token. Those were you, sick, and they should have went somewhere cooler, be more rare. 
Yeah, it was kind of interesting because even okay, so that one had it where if you went to a battle harn, you got an EA rainbow foil of those tokens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where it was like, okay, I got a lower rarity of the... It's just like, what are we yeah. doing, man? We're like giving out cold foils in weird spots and in rainbow foils and like more prestigious spots. And it's just like, ah, oh, man, like pricing. I mean, obviously this is coming from a competitive standpoint, but it's like you want to feel like you earned it. All right? Yeah. Like, and like... <sighs> I mean, I don't even think about the people like me who are traveling to all these tons of pro quests. I do think about those people on Twitter that that's their shining achievement, right? And they got they got a rainbow foil Betsy for their trouble. I have a theory, and I mentioned this on um, a podcast before, um, where the reason why they do this is to stop people from traveling, so that the the PQs stay local. You can't you, make it too worth it, right? Yeah. Yeah, because like back when they did do cold foil heroes, you could sell those cold foil heroes to like fund that trip, not a problem, right? Like cold foil dromai could have sold. You should for, be uh, able to. I don't know if that's what they because like the thing is also you can see it in their battle hardens. Their battle hardens they came out with more and more battle hardens every year, and it's in more and more like uh like localized cities i guess and so it's like so now like a battle in milwaukee it's gonna have like a hundred or maybe a little over a hundred people but it's not gonna be like a, any like thing over 200 so it's like kind of keeping battle horns a little bit more localized so i kind of wonder if they're trying to just localize flesh and blood in general yeah i don't know yeah they are making the prizes like almost like top heavy at like a global scale in a way. It's like, yeah, the bottle hardens and the PQs don't get anything. You really have to be at the pro tour, the callings to make the money. Right. Um, I, I still feel like they could make it worth it though. Like, okay, the plow under probably not a good prize because it would be just too expensive. Uh, but what if instead of getting a mat, you got a cold full plow under for top aiding a battle harden? That's money right there. That would probably pay for a lot of people's trips just that, right? Because they probably like say, a couple hundred bucks, yeah. People do like the mats. Like I know me and you do we they? have look at look at our, our buddy Greg. He has been he is not a any bit of a chi player, but he rocks that traverse the universe mat because it has the word pro tour on it and it's cool for him. And so if you get like for us, we have way too many mats. I agree. I could give a shit about a mat, but a lot of people. And it, it, I was like this when I first started. Want a mat? <laughs> I need to hear if, if anyone is still watching. Let me know in the comments. Do you care for another mat, bro? How cool does the mat have to be for you to really rock with it? I like, feel like you... most people are where we are, where we're just like, I got plenty of mats. I'm not worried about another mat. But yeah, you can still like, do it in addition to the mat too. Sure. Also. Sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I do think the PQ mats are a little less prestigious, but like a battle hard top eight mat, I think people really like those. Yeah. Like okay. I do want to winter well one. I'm. I think I'm. I'm still trying to do a little deal with my buddy Gabe to try to get a winter's his winter well play mat. Oh, he's got one. Uh, we had an old friend Adam who uh got top eight mm. at a um. Uh, battle hard and got it one so yeah mm, okay all right but that's well, more a collection thing yeah that would be that'd be kind of cool i know you collect all that tail stuff so that'd be yeah. cool for it um but yeah that's all i got all i got to talk about this week anything you want to close on uh what we'll, we'll be reporting back next week we'll let you know like how we it goes it every week <laughs> like we do every <laughs> single week <laughs> later gamers <laughs>